Bombs in Breath of the Wild are one of my favorite runes because of how fun it is to play with explosions and because of the way that they interact with the environment. You can generate the bombs, throw them, they'll interact with certain objects and destroy them, and with others they'll apply a physics force to them which is always fun to play with. So I thought it would be interesting to try and recreate this gameplay element flow in Game Builder Garage, where you generate the bomb, throw it, and then remotely detonate it. We're going to start with green person again, and a simple box object with a texture to be our bomb. We're going to use three teleport channels to control the state of the bomb, A, B, and C. A is going to be its neutral position off screen. B is going to be when the bomb is being held by the player, and then C will be used to throw the bomb or launch it in some direction that we want it to go into. And basically what we're going to do is build logic to manage the position of the bomb through the flow. We'll start with a button input, in this case L, just like in the game, that goes into a flag. I'll have an and node on so that when the flag is active and we press the button, we deactivate the flag. We can send the output from the flag to our B teleport entrance, since that's the held by the player state. We'll adjust the teleport exit to be Y negative, Y positive, and to reset the physics. We can take this opportunity to adjust the rest of the teleport exits. The throwing should be set to Y negative, Y positive, with a force of 10 in the Z negative direction, and the other should just be set to reset. So right away, we're activating the first flag, which is the holding a bomb flag. Then we'll add an and node on so that when we are holding the bomb and we press the R button, we want to throw it, or we want to activate the C teleport. You can't activate two teleports in the same frame without issues, so we'll add a very tiny timer that will then activate the C channel teleport. And we'll also throw in our next flag. We'll also want to deactivate that first flag once we throw the bomb. Once we've sorted that out, we can see we can now pick up the bomb, hold it over our head, walk around with it, and throw it. This next flag is used to indicate when the bomb has been thrown. So we're going to add in another button press. You can use the original one, it will just start to get tangled, so I've created a separate one for the L button, since that is the detonation button. And we'll have an AND node on so that when that is thrown flag is on, and we press the L button, we want to move on to our next logical step, and turn the current flag off. The result of this AND is what's going to be used to turn on the explosion effect and then proceed to the next logical step. For the effect, you just set it to world and you can change the size to something that's more appropriate to whatever kind of bomb you want to create and send that AND output trigger into the effect input to activate the bomb. Now, we don't want L to both trigger the bomb and pick it up and try to do it at the same time. So we'll add a quick AND node on to the initial L button press that requires that has thrown flag to be off in order for it to work. We're now going to throw in our last flag, and this one is a little bit more complicated. It's going to keep track of what happens during the bomb's explosion, since we're going to use an attract node on to push objects away, and that attract object needs some time to apply a significant force on them. So we're going to use a timer that comes on when the flag turns on, and once the timer is done, it will turn the flag off, and it's going to be a pretty short window. We also want a wormhole entrance so that we can have an is exploding variable to play with later. We're going to make physics objects move away from the bomb with an attract node on. So you'll add that in and attach it to the bomb object, and give it a fairly large size so that you can move things away from the bomb in a wide radius. A negative input will change it from attracting objects to repelling objects, so we'll take an inversion node on that takes the output of the is exploding flag and inverts it. So that should be it, let's try it out. So now that you have the logic flow complete, you can use bombs to affect physics objects and push them away from it. Next we're going to show you how to activate or specifically destroy certain objects. You want to add a fancy object to the bomb object, in this case an apple, and then you want to create the rest of the logic on the individual object. With this, we're basically going to use a touch sensor that's detecting the apple and detecting the bomb is exploding signal. When both of them are active at the same time, then you would use a destroy object node on to destroy that object.
I think that playing with the physics of bombs is pretty fun and it could lead to some interesting uses in gameplay. <laughs> 